Okay. There it is. We're yeah, doing it. Yay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I miss it? Like, Fabulous. We're all recording. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh, you. There's yeah. You part. You, don't touch it anymore. No touch it. Anymore. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> See, this is why we're fun. We can do this from anywhere. <laughs> uh huh. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe we should so now do this while we're camping. Do you think it's possible? You mean do the show while we're camping? There's no internet. No, not at the campsite. Oh yeah, go we... yeah. We could go into town. Ta town. There's no yeah. <laughs> Terralingua. It's well, not a town, really. Where are you going camping? Oh, y'all are going to Terralingua? Yeah. Oh my God, have you guys Big seen ben. the movie? Have you seen the movie about that? No. There's a movie. Ooh. Is oh my God, you guys. Car? It is a it is a documentary and it is fantastic. It's about the murder that happened out there. Oh snap! The yeah, ghost town. yeah. I'm looking at it right now. The ghost town in Terling with Texas. Interesting. It is, and the guy who tells his stories is old oh, cowboy talk like yes, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's everything you want. Huh? Awesome. We'll have to watch it. You'll have to. It was it was amazing. I love it out there anyway. Yeah. yeah. We went for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to come back. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So we're going again. <laughs> that's cool. So I want to, it's in Big Bend, right? So I want to go yeah. to that area so bad. I, I just want to see that side of Texas. Come with us. Like come. A, just get I in wish. the car and come. <laughs> I know, right? Just come up here. <laughs> we're, going, we're going the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and then coming back Dang. in the morning at 24th. Wow. wow. Man. It's seven hours away. Like. Yeah. And a border yeah. check. You have to be checked. Mm. A border check, mm -hmm. yeah. And which, every which, time which I freak cool. out and Roy, yeah. Roy has to tutor me. He's like, okay, do not widen your <laughs> eyes. Don't <laughs> widen. Calm. Yay. Like two trips back. She does like <laughs> Yeah. So they pull us over. And, uh -huh. and then they bring out the German Shepherds and they're like, oh, oh, no. we're going to run a German Shepherd around your car. <laughs> and I'm no like, way. oh, God, but I'm sure I bet they're going to find the pain reliever. <laughs> oh, no. and just, the extra strength Advil, oh no. Uh, and so the like, leave. Okay, the dog got a positive. We need to let the dog in the car. And Pinocchio's uh, like, at this point. She's what? Like, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off at this point. I'm like, uh, I'm afraid of y'all, but now this is real. <laughs> and then yeah. like, well, we have two options. We can put the car aside and completely disassemble it. Mm -hmm. And then you were responsible for putting it back together. We're going to pull the doors apart. We're going to pull everything out. Uh -huh. Or we can let the dog in the car. And I'm like, honey, I vote we let the dog in the car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right? Wow. I, I, that's terrifying. Yeah. Well, I think it's good, though, because, right, it's what they had in apartheid South Africa, and it's what they have in Israel for the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So it, it oh, makes Lord. more sense to me. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah we, it I just bet never North Korea happened. has this. You know China oh, sure. has it, and Russia has it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> North Dang. Korea, but they don't feed their dogs ever. So they take them out oh. and they're like, just go for it. Do what you need to do, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, we just went through those checkpoints because uh, we went to um, the Grand Canyon. We drove, yeah, we drove to the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. So, and then like coming back, it's like, I, I just want to see what West Texas looks like, but it was just dark. When we were driving back, it was dark. I was like, dang it. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely gonna have to take a trip over there. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's worth yeah. It's not yeah. the, I mean, once you've been to Grand Canyon, there's nothing in Texas that's going to make you go, Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I know. But like, we, we stopped at Palo, Dur Palo Duro Canyon on the oh, way up there. I disagree. I disagree. I love I love disagree. Palo Duro. Yeah, it's more accessible. So I like that, you know, run, being able to run around, you know, freely uh, up the, you know, the, the, the cliffs and everything. Or the, yeah. I disagree. I like that. We've been to Grand Canyon and I love going to West Texas. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I'm in the That's same cool. boat. Yeah, Grand Canyon is its own thing, but West Texas, hmm. I would mm -hmm. so much rather be I there see. than in New Mexico, Colorado, or Utah. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, being there, I was like, oh, I can see myself staying here. <laughs> <laughs> this and is the get, thing that upsets yeah. me about the U.S. breakup. Uh -huh. I'm worried that Utah is going to end up in the red United States. And I, uh -huh. I at least want Southern Utah <laughs> to end up in the blue. Yeah. You know Hold on, I mean? y'all. So we started, we, we, we started rolling. When should we, like, I'm thinking, should we? Yeah, it's, at this point, it's just a bunch of friends talking, and it's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, I bet people listening are like, what the hell's going on here? Well, no, but <laughs> we're going to probably edit this and, and clean it up. No, right? no. Like, just, just, just keep going, huh? Leave it as ugly as it <laughs> should is. We, should we, <laughs> should we, should we like... Unedited. Yeah. Well, it's Sunday Sunday morning. Morning. Whose idea was this yeah. anyway? Susie, was it your idea? It was Susie. Mine? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Start us oh, off, Susie. Go. It was. Wait a minute. I thought. I thought Roy was going to be the the lead, the anchor. Oh, that's right. I, yeah. <laughs> We're talking about that point. Yeah, to, to get into about... the topics. You're right. <laughs> Good deflecting. I, yeah. I know. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but I got to drop the hammer, and we got to get into some topics. All right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how does this wow. work, right? <laughs> well done. Wow. This is the work. <laughs> Right yeah. here on the No Name News Network. Woo! Yeah, exactly. Although we're the, close to a name, I think, right? Yeah. What is yeah, it? We're, mm. we're, we're the red piece. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, thought the the, <laughs> I thought your vote was for morning. <laughs> oh, my, my vote is for morning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Red piece morning. Yeah, why, red why piece morning. Why with morning is it, it could be with the U. I, I thought That's so how too. I hear I it every time, thing. yeah. Yeah, I thought the same thing as well, which could work too, because I mean, Hey, Bernie didn't win. I'm in mourning still. Okay. <laughs> Randy's mourning. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Well, we're going to be mourning the loss of the Red Party, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> mourning it or celebrating it, right? <laughs> Political parties have been nearly destroyed be multiple times before, and they always bounce back. They're like cancer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the Democratic Party imploded in 68. The Republican Party imploded in 2008. Nobody remembers that. I mean, it was a catastrophe. You know you're in trouble when Nancy Reagan and Ronald Reagan Jr. are going to the DNC. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yes. I, didn't know, I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Well, they, they, got, they were very clear. They said, we are not here because we are Democrats. But we are here because the Democratic Party supports stem cell research, and we want to see stem cell research advance. Okay. And then Nancy goes, it, would, it could have saved uh, my husband's last few years because stem cell research might lead to a cure for Alzheimer's. Interesting. But everybody near Nancy being at the DNC was an endorsement of the Democratic Party. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I mean, what we, what do we have now? Cindy McCain. We, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and we're right there. John you know, Kasich. Like. <laughs> and John Kasich. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. really doing well. We're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Just come full circle again. <laughs> yeah. So in eight years, the Republicans will win the presidency again. Mm -hmm. I Please mean, don't talk like that. I mean. <laughs> don't say things like that. It'll be at the end of Kamala's second term. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. You're suggesting that she didn't do well enough for us to keep going. Well, you, all, you all can only have 10 years. So, so. This, is, uh -huh. this, this is very strange. This is not usually my role. Um, but are we going to introduce ourselves? <laughs> I am. I'm. I'm. I'm literally the chaos person. But in y'all's presence, this is hilarious. I feel ordered, which is very strange. People know us by our faces. Um, no, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, this is gonna this is gonna go out via audio, so somebody's uh, got to say something that's worth yeah. recording. Well, but we're also <laughs> gonna put this out on the YouTube channel. You, right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, my but name is Roy YouTube Woody. Channel, Roy. The Austin okay. School. Austin School. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. What was your name, sir? My name is Roy Woody. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna be known as on this podcast? On this podcast, uh, just someone here to to, to talk and learn. <laughs> yeah. No, we gotta uh, we gotta do Roy something because there's yeah, two right. so that's what I was playing. Well, right, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm Roy P. I'll be Roy Peace. Roy Peace. Roy Peace and Roy Peace. Is, I'm Roy Ward. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's decided, I guess. Uh -huh. That is really. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are nuts. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, Vanessa, who are you? Who are you going to yeah. be? I know. Get, get some real. Some but real hold on a second. Like, but people listening to this want to know who the hell these two Roys yeah. are. Should we? Yeah. Should we? Yeah, absolutely. You, mean, you want a little bit? You do want a little get, bit of background? Get, then. get more than deep skin deep. Is that how you say skin deep? Yeah. 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 So, like, what's special? What's special about y'all? Oh God. 
<laughs> I don't. I don't think we have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I talk, I my wife tells me I talk a lot. Wonderful. Could we introduce each other, maybe? I, to... <laughs> I mean, we're all. <laughs> Roy Peace, let me ask you this. Why did you choose Peace? Um, peace, because I like, to me, I, I was like, uh, I've always been like just a, you know, a peaceful dude. Uh, uh, you know, I'm for peace. I, I, you know, I hate these wars that we're in constantly. And that's a, it's one of my biggest thing, you know, pet peeves is just like all these administrations get in there and we got to go to war. You know, it's always, uh, it's always about funding the war. We got more, we need more war, money for war and stuff like that. So, um, I'm just against that. And what else? Um, I want peace pretty much. I just, I just like peace. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think we don't have peace until everyone's taken care of, you know what I mean? So stuff like that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh -huh. Good call. <laughs> That's just your aura. That's just what you, Thank you. <laughs> emanate for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Man. And you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Why war? Is it really war? <laughs> Roy War. So is war an acronym? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's literal. <laughs> Man. Why war? It's not literal. Uh, yeah. So for me, I've always been super obsessed with war. I mean, like it's. Um, I taught for the University of Maryland. Uh, university college and I wrote the World War II course module <laughs> um, like that that's the level of obsession like when I when I need to escape reality I go to World War II in my head <laughs> Wow. Um, so there's that but then there, there's also this belief that I have <laughs> that uh, my my role in life is to tease out the contradictions to find where the <clears throat> where people's thinking is messed up and then and then i tend to expose it in a way that's kind of probably unkind and uh <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so you know like when i say i don't think trump is the worst president we've ever had i can list about 15 more that i think are worse right. people are gonna angry at me <laughs> you're definitely trying to go to war you you are <laughs> <laughs> I think Americans are really shitty at picking leadership and they really suck and Trump is actually not that bad <laughs> compared to the others. Oh my yeah, God, yeah. My, my trauma response to that is, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you for four years. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. He didn't, he didn't right. murder 1% of the Middle East population. <laughs> you know. no, my, my trauma response is, yeah. Like, when you're the head of like a racist, militaristic state, being ineffective is maybe a good thing. Well, until yes. except for COVID, right? I mean, having uh, yeah, I think, I think this is a yeah. repudiation COVID. of of libertarianism, rampant, corrupt capitalism, and no government. It turns out really sucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But nobody's going to see it that way. Well, libertarians Everybody... aren't because they're in some kind of weird bubble of yeah. white male privilege. Um, yeah. But well, not, even my parents don't think that that we could have stopped this COVID. Yeah. There's uh, no possible way we could have kept this in control. Sure. So, I mean, uh, so there is a. Wait, I lost your. There we go. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. Oh, the Yeti's coming out. Oh God, it's getting real. It's the, <laughs> I don't know why we're putting it right here. Uh, you guys having a hard better. time hearing us before? No, yeah, we're good. A, it's You're actually good. a lot better, though, I think. This oh, well, it is? Sorry. Yeah, it's a lot better. Thank okay. you, okay. Vanessa. Okay. Contradictions. Keep, keeping it real. All oh, right, so uh, <laughs> there was a study that was done that basically said that, yes, the first 20,000 COVID deaths in the U.S. were unpreventable. Everything else is on Trump. Yeah, yeah. So I he's mean, literally he killed a quarter million people because he's an incompetent moron surrounded by incompetent morons in a country of incompetent morons. Yeah. Well, yeah, he wouldn't be president if we weren't. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's amazing. You get the government you deserve, and here we are. Exactly, that's right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I keep trying to tell my European friends that, you know, I'm like, you know, do you guys pity us? And she said, a lot of people do, um, and a lot of people think you're getting what you deserve. What you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's like, like, yeah. I'm okay with both of those. <laughs> it's like that's why y'all have Bojo. 
But then again, <laughs> he got sick, and it was like, oh, maybe I need to change course. So at least yeah. he didn't do that. Suddenly, I care. <laughs> yeah. This national health thing is really kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> I call that the Cheney effect. That's yeah. where you Ooh. only care about an issue if it somehow affects you. Otherwise, uh -huh. screw everybody. Because of his yeah. daughter. Because of his daughter. His, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And she's, I don't like her either. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the, well either one but the one who the one who apparently humanized him somehow by on you know one issue for a second yeah, yeah. yeah. on one tiny yeah. issue did and she just do it barely <laughs> just yeah barely. right dang she's like my father has an iron heart you have to take pity on him because <laughs> right. that, heart, that heart thing that happened or whatever yeah <laughs> oh that's right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god that's so Man. funny <laughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> okay, Susie, yeah. it's time for you to yeah. do the, yeah, Susie. The, the intro. Uh, I'm Susie Sheeler, and I am a native Texan and uh, native uh, Austin-ish. I'm Georgetown adjacent. <laughs> and um, I'm very... Uh, uh, when actually I have to be really honest and say, I wasn't into, I wasn't a big political person until Trump got started running at all. I mean, I'd started some small things like normal in Asheville. I started their, their chapter there. But other than that, I had not at all been political. And so this uh, Trump was a, like, I think he was for a lot of people. He woke people up and shoved them into the light and said, do you see what's happening? And as an 80s baby, well, not as a baby, I, woke, I grew up in the 80s and everything, I mean, the, the worst thing we had to think about was cola wars. You know, we didn't know that there was stuff going on. I'm, I was in a very sheltered school, though. I was in Georgetown, which is all white. You know, everything's fine here. We're all Republican. Don't let any, the kids know anything's going on. Um, so it was a big big wake-up call for me actually i mean i knew about other countries that i lived in that had you know their government stuff but i never really paid attention to ours until until trump started running and most of my activist friends who are very very active right now same thing mm -hmm. so that's that's who i am i'm new <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the fight thank uh -huh. you <laughs> <clears throat> Ramesh, what about you? Ramesh. Hey y'all, Ramesh, he and they pronouns, and yeah, I don't know what, it, it, it changes from conversation to conversation, what identities I sort of bring up and feel most housed in, or how I want to present myself, right? Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in letting those things sort of uh, come out per the conversation. Yeah, one of the things I really, really love about all the sort of complicated nexuses of identities in which I like sit is that, um, you know, I can, I can be, hmm, like, for example, I'm in Pakistan right now, and I can be very, very American here in an unabashed way and poke people's buttons and be, you know, that Roy War figure for them in that kind of way. Uh, at other points in times, I can be very, very Muslim, and that can be, you know, what what I'm bringing to the conversation into that particular space. And so I love this ability to sort of slip and slide, slide between these different like boundary spaces. And yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that comes up in the conversations we have to. So yeah, I, I feel very hesitant and resistant to, you know, ever kind of pinning myself down by saying I work in this or I do this kind of thing or I identify with this. Right. And yeah. Thank, thank you, Ramesh, for reporting live from Pakistan, our foreign, foreign correspondent. There you go. Ramesh, there you go. Are, you, are you close to a window? Can you show us? Are there any mountains you can show us? Oh, it's, it's 8.40 p.m. You're not going to see anything. <laughs> oh, oh, dang. Darn it. And he oh, hasn't dang. gone to sleep yet. <laughs> well, yeah, it's 8.40 <laughs> p.m. <laughs> He's not a child. <laughs> My bedtime is eight. eight. Yeah, I you sleep between hey. eight and nine p.m. It's pretty. I'm bad. gonna be forty next. I'm gonna be forty next month, and that's I'm the same way. Like yeah. eight o'clock, I'm like we're, up, we're down. Like, but we've been like I've been like this since late twenties. Yeah. Just going to bed and then waking up between four and five in the morning. It's insane. Oh, that's, I can't. Yeah. That's, that's really too much. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's too much. Like, I don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Where's that? <laughs>
I wake up at five. I don't care what time I went to bed. I can go to bed at three. I'm up at five. I go to bed at six. Yeah. I'm up at five. I wake up at five. That's just what, what do y'all do without the crippling insomnia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at eight, and that's how I deal with my insomnia. <laughs> I'm gonna wake up at five. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no we doubt. get the best. We we we're supposed to be getting the best sleep between ten to two a.m. Anyway, so mm. yeah, Is, yeah. Yeah, right. just generally speaking, like any like if I was in France, it would be ten to two there that I would be getting the best sleep, or is it like? No, Whatever your sleep cycle is, like but, wherever yeah. you are, yeah. So it has Our to be like six is tuned hours into the darkness. In. Mm. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Ooh, bom, bom, bom. <laughs> no. No. Ooh. Tuned into you're tuned into the darkness now. <laughs> that should be the name. The name of the podcast: Tuned into the dark. No, that's just too <laughs> ominous. Oh, Lord, <laughs> let me tell you a tuned. story. Let, let me, me tell yeah, you a story. Seriously, let me tell you a story. <laughs> I like that it. Should be the name. I think so too. I think it's a great Let name. Let me tell you a story. Okay, Benafshe, it's your turn. Let me tell you a yes. story. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there we go. Seriously. Nice. So ever since I've known Roy, which is, I don't know, a million years, we met in right 1997. Um, his fascination with war, I'm just, just kind of going back. By the way, my name is Benafshe. <laughs> let me tell you a story messed me up. My name is Benafshe Madainajad, pronouns she, her. And um, I'll, I'll introduce myself biculturally. So with an Iranian um, pronunciation, it's Benafshe Madainajad. And anglicized is Benafshe Madainajad. So... Um, yeah, so the story is that ever since I've met him, he has been obsessed with war. And in the beginning, when we started dating, I was like, this guy, is something wrong with him. <laughs> um, especially because I'm a child of war, and I have a lot of trauma around war. Um, yeah, the Iran-Iraq war actually started mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the city that I was born and that I was living in. So I got... I have a lot of visceral reactions to war and especially visceral reaction to someone who says, I am fascinated with <laughs> war or I am, you know, I'm obsessed with war and I'm thinking, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the distance that you have to this topic. Um, wow. Uh, so yeah, so that was my reaction. Ever since then, I, I am convinced that he's actually died in a war, at least, um, in a past life. <laughs> so it's gotten a little more complicated. But uh, yeah, so I'm definitely not Ban Afsha War. <laughs> um, not that I'm not confrontational, um, although I am working on that. Um, yeah, so something interesting that I'm working on right now is, um, yeah, so I got out of academia, uh, stopped being a professor. It was sort of a combination of getting booted out and leaving. That's a whole nother thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and actually, uh, Ramesh and Roy and I started an organization called Interconnecting Arabs, Muslims, and Middle Easterners. And that's something I'm obsessed with right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it's, it's kind of interesting because, um, and we're hoping that, that this could be a news podcast for that organization too. Um, yeah. And I, I'm sure it'll keep coming up, so I'll I'll stop talking. But I'm happy to be here. Which then brings us to why we're doing this. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> this is not just Susie's idea; it's also Benafsha and my idea to do this. And then, of course, we couldn't wait to get Roy and Ramesh into the mix because I think it's going to be an interesting mix. Uh, the, the, Susie Susie brought it up first. She's she said we need to do a podcast. And I said, I got to think about this because I wasn't sure how this is going to work or where we're going to go or why we're going to do it. And then it, it, real, it occurred to me, we could kill three birds with one stone. We could do a podcast that's uniquely ours, but we could also create content for the Austin School and I am. And, and of course, 
uh, for those of you who are Austin School fans, I've been getting a pretty steady stream of people begging for content. And the format for the Austin School was live lectures that would be recorded and then put on YouTube. And with the COVID lockdown, uh, we stopped. So we, we had one, one event in January and that was it. So this is, this is my attempt <laughs> to create some content for the Austin School. Um, I just don't think that uh, the live lecture attempts that I've been doing for um, on Zoom or whatever format we're using are as effective in part because the interaction with the audience is so much less than when you're doing a face-to-face -face thing. So that I think this format where there's gonna be five of us and we're gonna be challenging each other and asking questions and, and pushing back, we'll, we'll have a much, mm -hmm. much better uh, chance of getting real good stuff done. Having said that, we do have an objective and the objective is, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, to sustain any gains that were made by four years of Trump sort of revealing all the contradictions in the United States, right? Like every time Trump opened his mouth, he said something that every previous president believed, but had never said. And, and that those exposures have forced us to confront the racism, the sexism, the homophobia, the anti-immigrant feelings, and really ask ourselves the kind of questions like, are we comfortable just plugging along and ha living our happy little middle-class lives? Or do we have to we, do we have to actually think about the cost of our middle class lives? And then, on top of that, um, it, I think all of us are sort of cognizant of what happened in 2008, which is Barack Obama was elected. We I think a lot of people had hoped that meant there were going to be real changes. There were some changes, like the Affordable Care Act. But I think most people would, on the left, would, would agree that the eight years of the center-right policies of Barack Obama were not some sort of utopian <laughs> dream achieved. And if anything, uh, his last six years, he was mostly shut down by a successful Republican um, counter-political culture that blocked up Congress and, and created the type of racism that then led to Trump. And my assumption is that's not only not going to go away, that Trump's going to be in the background, constantly stirring up his base. Um, he'll, he's probably going to want to run for 2024. He's Even if he doesn't, the Republicans are probably going to take uh, the House back in 2022 based on past history. Um, even if the Democrats capture the Senate with the, the, Georgia, the two Georgia votes that are outstanding on January 5th, that the, they, they won't be able to overcome filibusters, right? There is so much work to be done. And so that's what this podcast, I think, is really about. It is, let's not go back to sleeping into a coma like we usually do after an election. Now's the time to get out there and do the hard work. Yeah. Uh, Spot on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I just say one thing? It's our baby's birthday today. Um, he, yeah, he is, I know. So how auspicious is that? <laughs> so he is, today he becomes eight years old. His name is Roham Madani Najad Dash Casagranda. And he is brilliant and awesome. Um, just a mommy plug. I'm done now. <laughs> happy, happy birthday happy to birthday, him. Happy birthday, Roham. Exactly, happy birthday, Roham. <laughs> yes. So I want to tell you a story. <laughs> let, let me tell you a story. I think Ramesh was supposed to ask this question. W weren't you supposed to ask something? Yeah, what, what prompts that story though? I know the story. <laughs> what, what prompts the, what was the ask? <laughs> it was the, the ask was, um, why do we need to sustain this? Like what, 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 what is right, the- Right, right. What's the answer? Well, Roy, why do we need to sustain this? <laughs> Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> okay, so there was a moment that is seared into my brain. Um, and it, it happened in 2008, and I think it was August. Uh, might have been September. I don't think it could have been earlier than August. Might have been October. Definitely not November. 
<laughs> and the reason I'm so clear about the time period, which is clearly very fuzzy, is I know it was after the DNC and it was before the election because Obama had just become the Democratic nominee uh, uh, formally, right? He had just, it had just formally been put on it. And Amy Goodman interviewed him. And, and so for those of you who don't know, Amy Goodman is the host of Democracy Now!, and let me just tell you an Amy Goodley. Let me tell you another story in the middle of the story. Embedded story. An embedded story. Oh my God. Yeah. This oh. is going to turn into a thousand and one stories, right? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Inception. That was another name for the podcast A Thousand and One Stories. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a good one. Which I'm That's sure already one. exists somewhere. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 2002. It might have been 2003. I was listening to Amy Goodman again. And she was interviewing former president, Bill Clinton. And they, I want to say they would, the interview had lasted about 20 minutes or so. And Bill, Bill Clinton lost it. He goes, you can't talk to me that way. Uh, I'm the president. Well, he's, he obviously wasn't the president, right? Because George Bush was. But, you know, his, he keeps the title until the day he right. dies. He's president of the United States. Yeah. Former is incorrect. You're not supposed to call him former president. Why he was like, he so upset? What did she say to him? She just kept asking these really hard questions. She was mm. doing her job. She was doing her job. Oh. <laughs> Amy Goodman is a journalist, one of the only ones in the United States. Obviously. She's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, she is. And, and she's asking these really tough questions and he snaps, he loses it. And he goes, I, I'm the president of the United States. You can't talk to me that way. I, you have to give me a, a certain level of respect. I agreed to talk to you for 10 minutes. We're at tw minute 20 now. And mm. it, right, he just loses it. And Which I'm, reminds me of another president who just said that. <laughs> yes, it's not. Yes. <laughs> who keeps saying yeah. that? Yeah, who keeps saying that? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, um, she goes, "I am so sorry, Mr. President. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. I just wanted to get at some of these questions. If, if you'll forgive me, I'd like to continue the the the." <clears throat> The interview, and I think he said something effective. Yeah, but you know, let's 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 get back to the tone that it needs to be, or something like that. Mm. And she's like, "Yes, Mr. Mm. President, I I will ah. do that." And she continued to ask him the tough questions. She just kept sticking it to him. Good, good. And that is called strategy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And he lost it again, but this time he hung up on her. Oh uh shit! -huh. Uh -huh. So anybody who can make energy. Bill Clinton hang up on them. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for. Yeah. I'm all for that person. That's amazing. Yeah. So I'm so super eager to hear the interview with Obama because, right at, at that point, it's it was starting to really look like Obama was gonna was gonna get the presidency. Wait, and the cool thing about the special thing about uh, Bill Clinton is that he's proud. Like, he is known for the fact that yes. he can walk into a room of enemies and make every single one of them fall in love with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, in fact, he says that he does that. that he, he says he walks into the room and picks. Okay, so one more embedded story within an embedded story. So <laughs> when I was at the University of Houston, I won't mention any names. There was this conservative. He had some libertarian tendencies. I don't know how he identified. Doesn't cons conserve a libertarian or something, whatever it was. A uh, very Republican guy who got invited to the White House. And this is the late 90s. So there's this, oh my God, is, are you gonna go? It's Bill Clinton, you hate Bill Clinton. Every time you say liberal, like he, blood would come from his eyes and he'd foam at the mouth. He hated anybody who was center right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he goes, yeah, I gotta go. The president has invited me to the White I have to go. So. We can't wait to hear his report when he gets back. He came back and he was just like, I love Bill Clinton. I love Bill mm. Clinton. And we were confused. Like we would say liberal and he'd start bleeding. <laughs> oh, and then he'd say Bill Clinton and he'd light up and he'd go, I love Bill Clinton. <laughs> wow. And then I think it was maybe four years later, but I actually went and listened to Bill Clinton talk at UT. And he, and he gets up and he says, when I walk in a room, I look for the guy I think hates my guts. I go sit down next to that person. I'm going to spend the next hour charming him. And then I'm like, oh my God, 
I know what happened. <laughs> Dang. And it, wow. And Amy Goodman got him to hang up on it. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, wow. that's the impressive part to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this yeah. Obama interview with Amy Goodman, like, I can't wait. So she goes, I'm, I'm blown away by all your promises. I mean, if you really follow through with these promises, it's going to be incredible. I, I, can't, I can't wait for your administration to fulfill these promises. Are you going to fulfill them? Or is this just how you're going to get elected? And he goes, let me tell you a story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he says, okay, so Eleanor Roosevelt, of course, was really eager to get FDR into the civil rights movement. Now, most people think of civil rights as 1954 to 68, but really it started in the 20s. So by the 30s, you know, there's a little bit of momentum there and she's, she's been doing everything she can to get her husband on board. Um, and she gets some successes. And one of those successes is uh, she manages to, to get a black civil rights leader into the into the oval office and she's going to go in with him and so it's going to be her and the black civil rights leader against the president mm -hmm. and the president's on the other side of the desk and they, they they schedule it they they make it happen and so the civil rights activist is saying okay these are the things that i'm trying to get done and and you know he, he goes through and he does a whole spiel sales sales pitch and then he turns to FDR and he goes, Mr. President, are you going to support us? And FDR's response is, are you going to make me? Damn. Mm. And, and that was Obama's response to Amy Goodman. Mm. Are you going to make me? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's true, though. Do we hold him accountable or not? The, I don't think anybody's held Trump accountable for any of his promises, right? So, mm -mm. okay, I mean, so the political scientist in me then wants to point something out to everybody. Okay. And it's this, Americans are under the delusion, and it is delusion, maybe a little illusion too, that, that the title of an office confers upon you power. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it confers upon you the ability to execute yeah. powers, but it doesn't actually give you the power. You need to have power be before you become president in order to execute your policies. Yeah. So some of the stuff that was a little bit further to the left, Obama was never going to get through unless there was a popular uprising mm -hmm. in the country demanding it. And that's what he meant. And, it's, right. and the reality is he's right. There was no way for him to have done anything to the left of the ACA without the American public getting out there and doing something. Now, interestingly enough, what about St. Louis? Opportunity. What? I said, what about, what about St. Louis? What about Ferguson? What about all of I this? Mean, that so happens, he gets, right? a, he gets some opportunities yeah. in his, in his, at the end of his first term and in his second term, Occupy mm -hmm. in 2011. He could That's have, right. he could have used that as leverage. The problem was Occupy didn't do enough. It wasn't successful enough. It wasn't coherent enough for him to leverage it. And he, he had to gamble. Do I, he had to ask himself the question, do I go with the people who are, have an incoherent message, right? Literally occupies messages, we're apolitical. Dude, you're doing a revolution. You're in an uprising. Nothing is more political than that. <laughs> Stop saying you're apolitical. And then he's on the other side, he's got all the corporations and all the rich, and he's got the, the whole capitalist institution. Who's he going to side with? Of course he's going to side with the capitalists. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Do? That comes well, back to, like, like uh, defund right now. His, you know, his views on defund right now. You know, we can't come up with these catchy slogans. And I guess it's thinking, you're apolitical. You know, you, you don't want to do it either party. I think it's worth <laughs> it, right? But, <laughs> but it's like, come on. You know what they mean. <laughs> Just, uh, I think if he's genuine about it, he would say, oh, okay, yeah. I know what these guys mean. And what they mean is, People, don't, people uh, can't afford their rents. People can't, you know, um, afford childcare. People can't, you know, go to a hospital. It's what he should have done, I think. Yeah, you know, yeah, stuff like that. You could have totally clarified. You're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, just like don't ask, don't tell. I mean, you know, I feel like we just take these little bitty steps. And I feel like recently we'd made some pretty decent steps. And then somebody just jerked the rug out from under us. And, you know, I, I don't think Biden is going to be the greatest president by a long shot. But at least I know that my rights aren't going to be in question. Yeah, and the elections will be intact. To the we extent have... they are intact. Yeah. I mean, you know, in any given election, we get, what, 2 to 5% uh, turnover. Mm. And so our elections are at some level show. You know, when you get 95% cumbent re-election rate, <laughs> like, yeah. what's the point? Yeah, yeah. But, but, you're, but that out of the there's, there's the potential <laughs> if the American public would actually turn out and vote. Mm-hmm. I actually have a question. Um, I don't know about y'all, but in the last four years, especially 2020 with COVID, all my reserves got used up. Yes. Right. Um, it was just very, I mean, there was a bunch of personal stuff going on too. Um, so that has something to do with it. But if Trump was going to get elected again, um, I, I realize he's still in office and we don't know what's going to happen in January, but if we assume that all goes well, if he had been elected, I, 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 I have been inactive pretty much for the last six months. I don't post anything to anything. I don't even have, I just listen to the news, but other than that, I don't have political conversations. I have retreated because I'm like that uh, wounded uh, bear or whatever who needs to go lick their wounds and possibly even hibernate. <laughs> It's just, yeah. it's been too much. So if nothing comes, nothing other, nothing else comes out of this presidency, I don't see anything coming out of it other than, at least in, for me, other than just giving us a break for just oh, a man. few months. Um, and I know that this is about sustaining whatever we've gotten to this point, but I'm going to take a, the next mm-hmm. few weeks for the next few months um, and just recoup because yeah. it's been exhausting. I, yeah. I worry though what 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 becomes a break for you could be you know sort of a long term a, a retreat or a success or an ultimate victory for the folks who only got politically engaged when when Trump got into office, right? Yep. The moment is over. The moment is gone. We are good. Mm-hmm. We have succeeded. Yeah. The republic is intact or whatever. Where we can go home. Yeah. Just like the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> or 2008. Right. Hey, everything's yeah. fixed now. We got Everybody has forgotten, but George Bush Jr. is one of the worst presidents in human history, not just for the United States. That was the, human history. a cat- catastrophic eight years. Orders of magnitude worse than anything Trump did. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we've forgotten. Yep. And now people right. are walking around going, man, I miss Bush. What? <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Oh my God. That- I made a meme actually on that. Uh, you know, when, people, when Kanye announced his presidency, of course it was a joke. I didn't want to support him. But like, they were like, I can't believe Kanye's getting in there. He's going to take uh, votes from the Democratic Party. And then I was like, I made the, you know, they made the meme, uh, oh, we miss President Bush. And then I was like, oh yeah, I miss President Bush who did, you know, who, who caused the Iraq war, who did all right. these, all these mm-hmm. different things, you know what I mean? So Kanye did none of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. But you, but you want Bush back? It's like this is stupid. Yeah. No. <laughs> Doesn't make oh sense. God. But you know what? It was not for just a minute there. I thought, yeah, that could happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kanye could totally win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> what did he get? I like mean... thirteen votes, I think, or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> man <laughs> yeah no i think that's the that's the danger too is that and i and i can already see it i can already see it now that biden's won my yeah. friends are just like they're heaving these sighs of relief and and acting like they can mm-hmm. just go back to nothing and yeah. Yeah. it reminds me very much of the 80s when we were told hey sh- everything's fine don't don't look over here basically yeah. is what we were told mm-hmm. And be happy. You're an American. Yay, America number one. You know? Yeah. So we can't let that happen again. I mean, 
but how do you sustain like after Benefsha just said, I mean, I feel the same way. I'm just exhausted. But how do you maintain and sustain this movement that maybe will move us towards a Bernie-like uh, candidate at some point? Because I think for, he'll be dead by then. Mm-hmm. So I for me, say, it's been so, go ahead. Promise. For me, it's been a retreat into the local from like the national or international, right? So like the thing that where where I feel the biggest sort of gains have happened or where I, you know, I feel more comfortable or at peace is when I look at my, my personal local situation, like mm-hmm. all of a sudden after the summer, I'm in touch with so many local organizers and activists doing all sorts of amazing work, setting up parallel institutions, not just, you know, challenging or doing uh, electoral work, all of that good stuff. And yeah, that's been wonderful right like there's fridges for people to do you know go and get food and eat there's mutual aid networks that have been set up there's these sort of communal networks that that are serving folks and doing this kind of work of creating parallel institutions when uh folks have been sort of dis- disillusioned or cut out of or otherwise uh yeah disengage from from the institutions that should be serving them mm-hmm. so for me the retreat into local has been really really like a place of solace of community of ease all of that stuff because yeah i don't i don't want to spend the next four years trying to galvanize you know the muslim vote or this vote or that vote yeah yeah. Uh, exactly it's not your job you're not the democratic party you know liaison you know what i mean so it's not your job wait a minute yeah Uh uh-huh that's right yeah that's right but then the muslim vote it turns out may have played a critical role in electing biden that's right and it was it north carolina right that 30 wait Mm -hmm. i think 30 i this is the data i heard last week on npr 30 percent of muslims voted for trump no i believe that yeah and the reason that i'm hearing from the folks that did is is this war thing right uh, yeah they they didn't hear about drone strikes for four years that's 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 significant they didn't hear about you know escalation and uh, well, uh, Leila Fadel was talking about it, and she said there's a direct correlation about identify with identifying as white, mm. so being Muslim and identifying as white and voting for Trump, which is what we've mm. been talking about in mm-hmm. I Am this whole time. Yeah, mm-hmm. how whiteness uh, is, you know, and your relationship with whiteness. Um, and the anti-blackness that comes with it and the self-hate that comes with it and mm-hmm. all of that being brown or being identified, pinpointed as brown yeah. has a lot to do with, yeah, so. But I mean, it's worth also pointing out that seven votes for, a, for Biden for every three votes that Trump won, as opposed to white people, which was mm-hmm. six votes for Trump for every four votes that yeah, Biden won. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'm not, I'm not comparing. My mind is just, <sighs> freaking blown by the fact that 30 percent of muslims voted for trump i'm like oh my well, god wasn't it 40 percent of um, the lot max population and all that's what i was gonna of say yeah. too. i mean it was mm-hmm. there was a really again a direct shift. in fact she made that she made that uh that that connection that again as it as it is in the case with the latinx population it is there is a direct correlation between identifying as white and voting for trump Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah. that's true. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's true even for black people, even if you can't yeah. pass as black in the street, there's probably a little bit of connection, especially for black men, I think. I have no idea about black folks, but I do <laughs> know about brown ones, at, at least yeah. for Muslims. And yeah, so I mean, yeah, I Kanye I said it in one of his crazy. <laughs> crazy yeah, things. I mean, Trump made, I mean, uh, this, you know, they showed that the exit polls or whatever so far showed that he gained, he made gains in every category except for white men, which was like, oh, wow, that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> but, like, uh, <laughs> but like one thing that I saw happening was like they were trying to create a narrative uh, that black men were going to make help Trump win this election. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trying to set that narrative up. And it was just like and then when it comes out, it's like, no, black people voted nine, you know, 97 percent for Biden. <laughs> It's like, like, oh, like, they, you know, like black folks always do. So it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's what I saw. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the fact that they keep doing all these polls, we're like, oh, I can't believe all these Asians and all these Mexicans yeah. and all these blacks have voted. It's 
we need to keep pointing out 60% of white people voted for Trump. Like, yeah. there's no conversation here. Yeah, Stop yeah. looking like, for a scapegoat. <laughs> yeah, we're getting our numbers in, you know, wherever they need to be. <laughs> I, I, don't, I wish they were tied to another party. <laughs> a third party. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> just what we have, we're, you know, we're, we're at least pushing, you know, voting for the, the left most. <laughs> so, so that's, there was a Swedish study that, was, that came out in October. And it ranked all the political parties in the world according to whether they were left or right, and then also whether they were um, authoritarian or democratic. And like, you know, the Democratic Party shows up in the 15% most democratic parties in the world, which is amazing. I, I, that's mind blowing. And it's, it's slightly to the right of the middle. So it's a center right party. The Republican Party shows up pretty far to the right. It's a far right party on the at the 25th percentile for most authoritarian literally three quarters of the political parties on the planet are are, are more democratic than the republican party Damn. and you know it's right up there with the bjp and orban's party islamic republic of iran mm -hmm. oh, wow. i mean you know like it's insane so at some level oh there we go it it made <laughs> yeah it made made some sense for everybody to vote for the center right party that isn't uh, particularly progressive. Oh, they have it center left, but that's wrong. They, they clearly haven't <laughs> looked at the Democratic parties. The, the Democratic party should be right about where the CDU is. So let me give mm. you an idea what I mean by saying this. I'm not try, trying to say I, this I'm to I'm not surprised clever. that they're saying center left, even though it isn't, but yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, Who relative to the United States, it's a Swedish. Swedish? Yeah. Interesting. The, the reason is, so- Maybe Merkel they're believes, thinking they're taking into effect DSA. I, I doubt it. So Mer Mer Merkel believes like that there should be free university and she believes there should be universal free health care. <laughs> The Democratic Party doesn't support either of those two things. There's no, a wing no, in the Democratic right. Party that does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's right. But, but that wing uh, has been largely shut <laughs> up. And Biden keeps coming out and saying, so Merkel, the person that we think of as a conservative German chancellor, is to the left of, of Biden. Of Biden, yeah, for so sure. So just for clarity's sake. No, I mean, I think social that... issues, Merkel is to the right of Biden. But oh, on okay. economic issues, Merkel is to the left of Biden. Mm -hmm. Can I have that cup, please? I just want to go back to what we were talking about. We we sort of all nodded when I said we're exhausted and this is mm. a good break, but I just want to point out this is what we're doing during our break. <laughs> <laughs> For real. That's this, right. is, this is rest. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here, one more thing about rest. I'm a firm believer in rest. Mm -hmm. And the city of Austin has had oh, this yeah. issue with um, the underpass that goes underneath the railroad track on. Uh, Six, uh, it's Lamar and Six. Lamar and Six. Right before he gets. Oh, Fifth. Yeah. Lamar and you mean Six. that? Lamar and Fifth. And, and they're making that mural? They're making a mural. So yeah. the city has put one ugly piece of art after another until now. We have it's finally beautiful. Put, put something extraordinary and beautiful. On there, and it says rest. I just is drove necessary. Is necessary. <laughs> just drove under fine. that yesterday. It's gorgeous, and they're still working on it. I and gotta go working. take a trip out there. Um, raisin, ra uh, raisin in the sun. Uh, I think yeah, I trust her name. R A something. Uh, it's different, not just a standard raisin. But uh, I know she was leading that project, and um, she does some uh, she does some awesome stuff. I've it is awesome. Good for things before. Um, yeah, I, I need to it's take a trip and created there. by black folks, and it's just mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. It really yeah, is. Shout out to Raisin in the Sun and those folks for working on that. Uh -huh. Totally <laughs> deserved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> I do have to say, there were this. There was this knitting thing that they were doing one year. I like mm -hmm. those. Okay. Okay. You mean <laughs> the textile? You mean the textile thing that was? Yeah, yeah. it was knitted stuff. And they put it around those stupid <clears throat> blue and white signs that mean nothing. <laughs> Yeah, that, I was, that was special. Apparently, they're getting rid of that though. This is thank this, God. This, this piece I, was brought to you by those who live and are interested in Austin. But well, yeah. so my point though is, I think there's enough of us who have figured out that rest is important, and one of the most successful states, uh, two, two of the most successful states, because it was one and it split up, so now it's two. In in our 
in the continuum of human history is Sweden and Norway, right? It was the kingdom of Sweden, Norway in 1848 when they, when they took part in the pan-European revolutions that swept the continent, the peninsula, sorry, because right, Europe isn't a continent at all. It's a peninsula in Asia. Asia is a continent. Thank you. But um, it's, like, it's like Europe is a continent the same way Pluto is a planet. I'm just waiting for the committee to finally demote it. Right. Um, hey, I'm willing to give Europe a continent to it as long as South Asia gets it too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Saudi Arabia should get one then. And Korea. Dang. Nah. <laughs> Let's what give about, everybody what about a Texas continent. If we <laughs> what about Texas if we secede? Well, uh, <laughs> Biederman gonna... is going to make that happen. Oh, God. I, I'm I actually know. horrified if the, if the Texas public got, got to vote. I bet we would mm. text it. Oh, I bet. No, oh, yeah. yeah, no yeah, kidding. I'm yeah. totally, I think it would be like the Brexit vote. Like, no, it yeah. never happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well, so true. We were never, saying that yeah, about Texas, Trump winning in I mean, 2016, too. Yeah, I mean, Biden was supposed to win Texas. That I could totally see your, that vote happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. And, and the polls would be off by 10 percent. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, they're not gonna do it. Wow. <laughs> oh, they did it. Ooh. <laughs> and then we have some issue about fishing waters. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, those poor it, people. It Sweet. took Sweden and Norway 172 years to get where they are today. Mm -hmm. which is by no means a utopia. There are flaws in both states that they will spend probably centuries slowly solving. My point is they've been slowly solving these problems incrementally. They've got a long mm -hmm. ways to go. It's maybe a thousand year project, but they're 172 years into it. Right. That's something. Um, yeah. And so what we need to do is we need to pace ourselves. We need to take the victories we get and celebrate them we need to acknowledge that we're going to die having failed miserably if our goal was a short-term goal, but, but we might leave something for our great grandchildren. That's right. that's right. And and that's what we got. Keep our eye on the prize, right? It's, it's not here. It's not immediate. I mean, uh, celebrating, um, celebrating black women profits again, going back to Adrienne Marie Brown and her emergent strategy that says slow is good. And when you were, when we were talking about the whole, um, um, you know, I think Susie, you were saying my friend was telling me that you know I'm just gonna go sit back now. I'm feeling yeah, I'm feeling yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the folks who got activated and got some sort of leveling up in political consciousness are you know they did that leveling up it was a quantum they're done jump. they're done for however wh whatever right mm -hmm. but but um yeah but rest in 2028 is, when the is still necessary <laughs> yeah. Yeah. in 2028 maybe when the republicans win they'll reactivate and go again yeah yeah <laughs> I just cannot I mean, I, I, yeah I don't know, you guys. I think it, I mean, I, I do believe that. I believe that people are going to become, you know, laurely and rest on them. Um, but I also think that Trump is going to run around and continue to do these horrifying racist rallies. And that's going to keep people very upset and very on edge. And we're going to stay at each other. Just, you know, we can only I hope. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's a fact, though. And I said that to someone, I, I think it might have been, <clears throat> I think it might have been Alice Embry, I don't remember. But she's, I said, what if this was a good thing? What if Trump turns out to be a really good thing for the country, because we realize how fucked up we are, and maybe we'll start making some strides and people will become involved in their politics. Um, and of course, everybody jumped all over me and said, he's not good for anything. Yeah. And I was like, well, I think he showed but us a both. lot about he's who we are. He's both good and terrible. I mean, why mm -hmm. can't we yeah. say that? He's both. Hor yeah. Horrible for COVID. Horrible for COVID. But yeah, there's something. I'm glad. I'm glad that he, you know, woke a lot of people up. They don't need to go back to sleep. And exactly. Then, yeah. uh, but yeah. Obama, yeah. Obama has kind of said that, oh, you, you know, you guys aren't going to have to worry under Joe Biden. You know, you're going to go. go <laughs> Obama back. is tucking you us in. Yeah. He's, 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 oh story. I love that. He's, he's singing alone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, yes. he is. Uh -huh. And then That's Biden brilliant. has done it. Uh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> don't, guys. We need you to stay engaged. I don't understand how anyone can think that Biden is anything other than centrist. 
I don't see you how people. Just for people I who think are he's okay more with Republican. Game, game. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. But he, I mean, he's yeah. on the Democrat ticket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are know. literally, yeah. I mean, I think we think we're further ahead than we are. We are not. <laughs> no. We just are not. We've exactly. taken steps back, um, and it's like to Huge. me, it's like that. Uh, the other day when he had that that conference call with the. Uh, the civil rights leaders from the black community. And he's like, I beat the progressive. I, you know, I'm the only person uh, uh, who said, who brought up Charlottesville. None of the progressives did, no one else did. Oh it's God. me, me, me. He did have this me, me, me tone. And yeah. The thing I hated the most about it was as a black, as a black guy, he had this tone of like, listen here, you Negroes. This oh. is what I'm going to do. This is what, we, we can't do these things. Stop pushing for, you know, stop trying to get us to do executive orders. Uh, stop, you know what I mean? It's like, he's wow. already showing, I'm not going to do these things, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. I had multiple black friends say, or and acquaintances for that matter, that they were voting for Biden in the primary because they believed that white people would abandon Sanders because Sanders was going to actually do stuff. And their goal was just to get out from underneath Trump. They didn't care if there was any meaningful change. And I, I get that level of desperation. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, so I, I think that's one of the reasons why I feel because I feel order of magnitude less nervous and freaked out and distressed. Yeah. Now that it looks likely that Biden is going to take the office on January 20th. Mm -hmm. So I'm there. Oh. I'm, I'm with them on that. But I, I agree with what Roy said just now, which is we're, we've actually had setbacks and we've, we've got a lot of work to do on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't take your well, finger up yet. Got to keep him under there. But do get your, like, like yeah, do get your rest, though, because, I mean, we all need it, you know what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, <laughs> kind of keep it, keep, keep, you know, if you can. You know, here, keep right? watching. We're, we're here. Keep watch, we're still, yeah. I'm keep saying watch. rest, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know exactly, exactly. Yep. Yep. Get it where you can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think we've, we've reached our time limit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I think what we need to do is sort of maybe wrap it up. Everybody say something for, to sort of bring it home. Bring it on home. Uh, bring it on home. <laughs> I think this is great and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think this is going to be a, a great show and very informative. And I hope that we engage a lot of folks who want to, you know, ask questions and stuff. That's what yeah. I'm hoping. Yay. Exactly. I'm going to name something I'm anxious about and something I'm, you know, excited or happy about. Or, Ooh, yeah. I like it. So I'm, I'm anxious because I feel like, you know, cyclically, whenever we have this right word lurch, the return to like complacency is all the more like alluring and the return to normalcy is all the more alluring and nice and all of that. And I feel like it operates like one of those, uh, what is the term for this thing? You turn it to the right and then it doesn't go back as far. It, 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 the gear has a little notch in it. You turn a little bit to the right, doesn't go back as far. A ratchet? Um, a ratchet, yeah, that. And that's that's sort of the image I'm seeing in my head. Uh, what's keeping me more hopeful, of course, is like what whatever is taking place locally in all the communities I'm sort of involved in is has been wonderful, has been great over the past year, two years, all of that. And yeah, I feel like if we have been craving this space and wanted uh, to get together and create this space and others are too. And I'm, that, that makes me hopeful is that other folks are probably thinking about this uh, aligned with us in this kind of way as well. Yeah, for me, um, seeing that I think people are, you know what I mean? We are stuck in this two party system, but I'm seeing a lot more people, especially in the black community as well, that are like, we're fed up with the, both of these parties. You know what I mean? They're not, if they're not gonna do anything for us, maybe we do need to find something else. Maybe, we, you know, people are getting, People are at their limits, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that that's enough to keep people engaged and enough people, exactly. Um, I'm just feeling a lot of love right now. I'm a little sappy, y'all, so I'm just going to let it be. <laughs> it's just how it is. <laughs> I'm a hugger, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a good show. Exactly. Good stuff. <laughs> it might work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, I tell you what, when we finish, it, um, you're going to have an, op it'll say uh, it's uploading to your computer. If you'll take that file and put it into um, a Google file that we can all access, I think uh, Ramesh started one. 
you put right. those audios in there, then I can mm. edit it. Oh, are we, are yeah. we still are we still live? Are we live? We Wait, are we're still live. But oh. I can cut. <laughs> I can cut this out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, should we? Bye. 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 Great to have you. Bye. Take care. Wear a mask. Social distance. Wear a mask. Yeah. Don't yes. die. Yes. <laughs> wear a mask. Don't die. Don't, don't die. die. <laughs> <laughs> On purpose, right? By not wearing. Right. 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 <laughs> Well, what a what a note to end on. Can we redo that? <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. I think it's kind of good. Yeah, we want you to come back. Don't die. <laughs> Don't die because you didn't wear a mask. I mean, right. if you're gonna die, die for some other reason. <laughs> some really decent reason. Dang. Car accidents. They're really popular. They are. Thirty-two thousand oh, a year. God. <laughs> That's a lot. That it's one ten thousandth of the US population every year. Ooh. Dang. I mean, it makes no sense. We need to get rid yeah. of cars. Uh, I agree. Let's with end that. it on that note. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dang. Don't die and stay out of cars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of cars. <laughs> we just bought a car. That's hilarious. Ah. What choice do we have? We don't have a choice. Is there mass transit yeah. in this the, city? The car had died. We had to get one. Yeah. There is Dang. not, there is not mass transit in this city, and I'm very upset by it. Yeah. But now, the, but now you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's true. No, but we passed the, mm -hmm. oh yeah, the transit yeah, bond. So transit maybe bond. something will start to happen. No, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I want that subway and that's not like twenty. That's like twenty years out or something, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's time. what they said twenty years ago and forty years ago. But we yeah. voted no twenty years ago, and we voted no again six years ago. But this time we voted oh. yes. But think yeah. about it: if we had said yes twenty years ago, where would we be now? We would be so great right now. But then the state of Texas would say, "That doesn't use oil. Shut it down." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's I, I just see like. <laughs> Are yeah, like the like the train tracks that are like in South in South Austin. I'm like, oh, yeah. imagine if they would have kept that going. They should have let stayed it left it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yeah. All right, let's. We should have just again. kept the streetcars. <laughs> we, we don't want to yeah. let our audience go, do we? We just yeah. they're dormant. We will be oh, back. We're still live. We'll be back. We'll see y'all later. Oh. <laughs> I right, need to record. <laughs>